Good morning, RJC. Oh, it's always good to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me back again this year. Thank you to Matt Brooks, my really good friend, Eric Levine, and all of RJC for the organization you have built. I'm not going to use my time today to give you a 25-minute policy speech. 40, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Young lady in the front said, thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. 48 hours after Israel was attacked, I spoke for 30 minutes at the Huston Institute. I laid out a blueprint for reversing the Biden policy of America weakness, retreat, and rewarding terrorism that cost innocent Americans and Israelis their lives. We need to stop spending and sending pallets of cash and unrequited love to Iran. Because Iran has our blood on their hands. We need to restart the momentum of the Abraham Accords that deepened Israel's recognition in the Arab world. We need a new president and an administration that doesn't speak with a forked tongue, saying they support Israel in the day while they delay Israel at night. The last few weeks have been the clearest possible reminder Republicans must win back the White House in 2024. But until then, I am leading in the Senate to do everything possible. Five years ago, not last year, but five years ago, I started working on anti-Semitism legislation because bigotry ain't new. Now, I'm leaning on new laws to defund universities that coddle anti-Semitism. I started working in May on new laws to stop Iran's sanctions from sunsetting. They should stay permanent and much more. But I'm not here today to just talk about the legislation. I want to talk about something that is even deeper than policy details and even more urgent. As a Christian, I see the Jewish people as my elder brothers and sisters in faith. We all serve the one true God, the God, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob. And the scriptures that we hold in common make one thing very clear. We have a calling, a duty to recognize evil and to confront it and call it by its name. <laughs> Proverbs says, he who justifies the wicked or condemn the righteous are an abomination to the Lord. Beheading babies. Raping women, burning children alive, kidnapping families from their homes. This is not protest. It's not geopolitics. It is evil personified. Jewish people being slaughtered in their homes simply because their nation exists 
is not some unfortunate, complex, international conflict. It is evil and it is subhuman. When a terrorist calls his parents to brag about the Jews he has killed with his bare hands, and the response from his parents are tears of joy, that is evil from the pit of hell. And the poisonous anti-Semitism that has been allowed to fester on the radical left in American politics is just as disgusting as well. Our first president, George Washington, wrote a letter to a Jewish congregation. He reassured them that our brand new country would give to bigotry no sanction, to persecution no assistance. He said the children of Abraham would not live in fear. But now, fast forward 233 years. Today, our capital city and a university named for George Washington saw radical students being allowed to project pro-Hamas, pro-genocide propaganda. It said, glory to our martyrs, they wrote. Palestine from the river to the sea. Praising the murderers, calling for the extermination of Israel. And Mark, the university did nothing. At Princeton, a crowd screaming, long live the inf intifada. At MIT, anti-Semitic demonstrators demanding, quote, one solution. At the University of Washington, a Jewish student sobbed and begged administrators to do something. They want our people dead, she said. They want us killed. How are you allowing this? Left-wing universities and college presidents have spent years rushing into every political controversy they can get their hands on. They've had no problem speaking up. But now, now that their own institutions are being used as platforms to call for genocide, now they offer pathetic equivocation or worse, deafening silence. They seem more offended by microaggressions than by mass murder. In the 1990s, the late Justice Scalia delivered a bone-chilling speech about the Holocaust. He said, we will have missed the most frightening aspect of it all if we do not appreciate that it happened in one of the most educated, progressive, cultured countries on the planet. The Germany of the 1930s proved that a society can place all the value they want on education and credentials and elite institutions. But if we lose our moral compass, these things don't just become useless, they become dangerous. We need moral clarity. So let's start today. Let this echo across every college campus in America. A federal subsidy for your education is not a right, it's a privilege. A visa so foreign students can study here is not a right, it's a privilege. Do you want to know what a right is? 
the right of Jewish Americans to walk down the street in safety. That's a right. Do, do, do you want to know what a right is? The right of Jewish students to study in their own college library without being suggested that you hide in an attic. That's a right. And this goes deeper than our college campuses. We have seen, we have seen the footage of Israel supporters being assaulted on our streets by radicals draped in a Palestinian flag. NYPD has seen an explosion of anti-Semitic hate crimes in New York City over the last three weeks. The ADL is tracking a 400% increase, spike nationwide. If there were any, uh, if this was any other minority group, hear me. If this was any other minority group, the far left would be screaming from the rooftops and the media would be lighting their hair on fire. Progressives say they're all about the safety and the feelings of minorities, the oppressed, the marginalized. But when it comes to Jewish Americans, who are hurting, they're silent. I can only call that one thing, anti-Semitism. Plain and simple, call it what it is. It is wrong, it is un-American, it is unacceptable. We must stand and be counted on the side of right. Our nation deserves better. Our Jewish community deserves better. America, stand up and do what's right. Don't let our friends in the community have to defend themselves. Don't let our friends in the community have to stand for themselves. The evil but the evil extends all the way to the halls of Congress. This week, just this week, 15 radical Democrats voted against condemning the Hamas attacks, or they simply voted present. It's hard to believe that. One of them, Ilhan Omar, <laughs> literally claimed that the Jewish people had hypnotized the world. How ridiculous is that? Another one of them, Rashida Talib is literally an extension of the propaganda machine of Hamas. <laughs> Several members of the squad support the anti-Semitic BDS movement, a coordinated worldwide economic war of aggression against Israel. Nobody, by the way, hear me clearly, Nobody is making Joe Biden put up with all this stuff. Nobody's calling, no one's stopping Kamala Harris from speaking out. Nothing's preventing Chuck Schumer from denouncing these yo-yos from the Senate floor. <laughs> Nothing's stopping Hakeem Jeffries from kicking them off their committees and out of their caucus. Nothing except the fact that they only care about
power. They, they would rather embrace anti-Semitism within their ranks than upset their liberal base. You know, there's a point where cowardice becomes complicity, and they're way past that point. You see, we, we have to cut out the rot of anti-Semitism from our society. We need cultural chemotherapy to fight this cancer. So let me speak to any student who's advocating for murder and terrorism. You should be expelled from the campus. And to any student on a foreign visa who calls for genocide should be deported. You're gone. And any university, and I mean any, any university that lets itself become a megaphone for evil should lose every single dime of federal money. Your tax dollars should not support that crap. Anybody who marches through the streets applauding the killing of Americans and Israelis should be considered unemployable. <laughs> they won't work in my office. And any member of Congress who gives one ounce of aid, comfort, or support to terrorist killers through their words, their actions, or their affiliation with groups like the DSA should be expelled from office immediately. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you why, though. If you support Hamas, you are in violation of your oath of office, period. Let me close with this. It's very simple to me. In Genesis, God creates light, and he calls it good. And he divides the light from the darkness. That is our mission. That is our charge. That is the blessing we can be to the world. We can separate the darkness from the light. We can call evil by its name and overcome it. You know, people ask, who will stand in the gap for the Jewish people? I say, I will stand in the gap for the Jewish people. I will stand alone. I will stand with two. I will stand with a hundred. I will stand in the gap for the Jewish people. You shouldn't have to stand for yourself. I will take that on. Who, who will fight the cancer of anti-Semitism on college campuses? We will. Who will reclaim our streets for peace and patriotism? We will.
And let me tell you why. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, is the prophet's prayer for Israel. Because I love Zion, I will not be silent. Because my heart yearns for Jerusalem, I cannot be silent. I will not stop praying for her until her righteousness shines like the dawn and her salvation blazes like a burning torch. My friends, may we be messengers of that light. May we be ambassadors of God's mercy to the good, but, w- but may we also be instruments of his justice to the wicked. You see, good will triumph and evil will fail. Hamas and his allies need to feel the wrath of God. And I dare say, I dare say, may they meet the wrath of God with some American military hardware. Send them on their way. God bless. Stay strong. Stay safe. And let's win this fight.